Hi, in this video, I am going to quickly take you through three ways in which you can compute year to date or YTD numbers. So here we have monthly sales across various years and in the month column, I actually have the month ending date. Now we need to get the YTD sales. This is not a simple running total because the total has to be reset at the beginning of each year. Now what I currently have is a messy way to do this. I have used relative reference and I have manually altered the formula in all the rows for January. And this formula would easily fail if someone were to do as simple as reordering the data. In my previous video, I talked about the importance of structural referencing. If you haven't seen it, you can check that out by clicking on the card above. Now coming back to the problem, how do we solve this? See, YTD number is going to be sum of all the numbers that are on or before the current date, but in the same year. So it has to satisfy two criteria. What are they? The year of the dates should be equal to the year of the current month and the date should be less than or equal to the current date. The easiest approach is to use a sum ifs function. But if I have to use that, I need to obtain the year of the dates in a separate column. So I'll do that at the end. First, let's try to do this without an extra column. One thing you can do is to use a sum product function. And this is how it's going to work. So I'm going to give a formula equal sum product, open the bracket. The array I have to sum up is the amount column, but I'm going to multiply it with two Boolean conditions. What are they? Multiply with one condition that is the year of the dates, which are there in the month column should be equal to year of the current month. That's one condition, close the bracket, multiply it with another condition, which is the dates in the month column should be less than or equal to the current date. This formula would make all the values that do not meet the two conditions into zero. So the summation would only be of those values that satisfy our condition. And that's how we get our YTD numbers. In Office 365, you do not need to use sum product. You can just get it done through the sum function itself. But if you're using any of the older version, you need to use the sum product. In Office 365, there is one more option and that is to use the filter function with the sum function. It is almost going to be on the same lines. So the formula is going to be equals to sum, open the bracket. So here we're going to filter the amount column for our conditions. So filter amount, comma, the conditions are going to be year of the dates in the month column should be equal to year of the current date. Close the bracket, multiplied by the dates in the month column should be less than or equal to the current date. So we've given two conditions. So we've got the same weighted numbers again here. Again, if you want to understand how the filter function works, Click on the card about to go through the advanced filtered function tutorial that I've saved already. If these two functions sound too complicated, then we can very well break our logic into parts and then use the sum ifs function. So let's do that. Let's keep a year column in which I'm going to obtain the year values using the year function. So now that I've got it, I can simply use the sum ifs. So equal sum ifs, the amount column, comma, the first criteria is there in the year column, select that. And what's the criteria? The criteria is that the value should be the same as current year. One more criteria that's there in the month column and the criteria is that the values there should be less than or equal to the date of the current month. Close the bracket. We've got the same YTD numbers again. This YTD calculations that we've been doing is all based on calendar year. What if we wanted it by financial year? Very simple. Let's just append the financial year in the year column. Now this can be done using a simple formula. So that's going to be equal to year of the date plus check whether the month of the date is greater than the year ending month. Now this gives us our financial year and now automatically our YTD numbers are recomputed based on the financial year. If you want to know the logic behind how we obtain the financial year number, click on the card above and that'll take you to a tutorial on the same. Hope you found this video useful. If you have alternative approach to get the YTD numbers, do mention them in the comments. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.